All right, everybody. This is Chad, guitarist from Victims of Contagion, also known as Larrikin666, basically all the major guitar forums. And what I'm panning back and forth on is after 26, of May, 26 months of waiting, this is my KXK 7 scale fan fret 7 string guitar. Picked this thing up last night after an hour or two of freaking out when UPS couldn't find it there. Apparently turning a box over to read the label is very difficult, but they figured it out. So let's open this thing up. I think it was delayed a bit. Rob told me he was waiting on some G&G &G cases. That seems par for the course from any loser or manufacturer using their cases at this point, but they do make nice cases. So start off, this is probably the most well-packed guitar I've ever received and actually took me about 10 minutes to get it out. It was it was so well-packed in there. Um, definitely not to the point where it would damage the guitar or anything, but man, Rob does an awesome job. So let's get this thing. So this is all custom made for me, all my specs. Let's get some extras. Start with case candy. Since we're on it, Rob uses recessed strap locks built in. It's everything I would need to throw this stuff on my strap. Keys for the lock, Allen key that I need, and the part that everybody really cares about, the guitar itself. Now, since it's so dark in here, this probably looks a little more blue, but it's actually a really deep see-through purple. This is a custom color. Rob and I discussed, so there's not even a number that I can reference for everybody. These are hand-wound by Rob. It's actually fit the fan, and I haven't actually heard it plugged in yet, so I can't verify. But what we talked about is we decided to have these wound to be tonally and output wise really similar to bare knuckle aftermaths so I think that stuff's great for down tuned metal um, really tight articulate good good mid range cut through mix really well and so the fan on low side is 27 inches up to 25 and a half on the treble end so this is going to give really nice tight articulate low stuff um, but still really maintain that a really nice sweet high end for you know the higher end of the chords um, you know really nice solos great lead stuff and so this is a maple neck through with mahogany wings and a, a really cool flamed maple top um, Rob doesn't do a ton of flamed maple stuff so yeah, a little more we don't get a ton of natural light here in Pittsburgh so this little bit of grayness should help I can see that the, the flame on there is really cool um, he, he did an awesome job book matching this thing I mean that the seam is really difficult to see from more than a few inches away recess knobs three-way switch nice and out of the way never gonna get in the way of my playing the tone knob will never be touched ever again um, it's a carved top, so it, I mean, it feels ridiculously comfortable. Um, my only regret with this thing, and this is certainly not the fault of Rob's, it's we talked about it and I, I didn't go with it, but if anybody else has seen Fred the Shred's red anodized seven scale that he just got, he actually went with red kind of offset following the fan up and then back down dots. Um, it looks amazing. So I'm probably going to get some like purple dot inlay stickers and drop them on this ebony board. Because blank boards are, I, I like how they look aesthetically, but they're, they're tough to play. So let's pick this thing up. One really neat thing is this, it's probably not going to pick up super well, but this is actually all natural binding. So this is, this is all stuff that Rob taped off, you know, had the purple finish around um, and then did a clear coat over top and it up close from a distance it just looks 
absolutely incredible. So it's really hard to like actually show how ridiculously thin this neck is. Um, I have incredibly small hands. I'm only 5'5", five five. Um, so thin necks are really preferred. Um, oddly enough, um, I'm not a big Ibanez fan. The, their D profile just with the shoulders kind of cramps up my hand. The, the one guitar I've touched this really reminds me of though is if you're an old Ibanez 90s Universe fan, this feels super similar to that, but it, I mean, it's it's definitely a unique profile. I've never picked up another guitar that feels exactly the same as this. Um, I'm I'm really excited for it. So you can see it from the back, gorgeous. You can actually see through, see where everything the maple and mahogany meets. Rob's unreal heel. That I mean, these these cutouts are just incredible. The upper fret access is perfect. Zero complaints, unfinished neck, feels awesome. Just got just enough grit on it to make sure that, you know, if you're somebody who slips up and down the fretboard, um, not gonna be a problem here. So you see this line, this is where he brought the clear coat up a little bit, make sure you actually protect the, the purple finish underneath. And it's on both ends, which I think is just phenomenal. Locking tuners. And for the most part, that is it. I've managed to avoid plugging this thing in yet. Um, by some miracle. But this thing is great. I'm, I'm super stoked. I just, I've looked this thing up and down. I mean, not that I expected to find flaws on here, but I'm somebody who can definitely nitpick over things on a guitar, but I have absolutely no complaints. Um, no improvements other than the, the inlays, which is a super easy thing to take care of. Uh, this is definitely not acoustically a loud guitar. Not not the loudest I've ever played. I think my, my Bernie Rico Hesperian is actually a little bit louder. And I know the, the next logical thing people are going to start asking about is a side-by-side a -side comparison of these things. So that'll happen at some point, but I don't want to make this about that kind of stuff right now. I just want to let this guitar shine. Give you guys a quick strum of this just acoustically. So not... Not ridiculously loud, but it resonates very well. So, let me know if you guys have questions. I'm going to try and get some clips or videos together of this thing, probably tomorrow. Uh, I'm certainly not the greatest lead player in the world. I'm, I'm a riff guy, so and Chuck, the other guitarist in the band, is here tomorrow to do some tracking. I might have him do some Meadly D stuff, since that's his bread and butter. And he can probably demo this thing and actually show it off a little more proficiently than I can. So, thanks for checking it out, guys. Great job, Rob.